So, for example, Jewish people understood that the resurrection is in the future. Okay, that was a, that was the concept that were taught the resurrection for the future, the Messiah, last day. Messiah yeah. coming back. Yeah, the Messiah will come back on that day of resurrection, okay. and everybody will be raised. They did not perceive that there could be a resurrection in their time frame of anybody. So when they saw a little girl raising the dead, a young man raising the dead, Lazarus raising the dead, this was shocking. It, it, it was breaking down their theology. Okay. To, to, to make it a new understanding. That's why Jesus sure. said, I am the resurrection. Christ, Christ has come to death. Yeah. Christ is I, now okay. I have the really, Father. really interesting um, things to, uh, to kind of open up because I, I like where this conversation is going. Um, so in John, um, you know, talking about, you were just talking about how um, a lot of the apostles were, uh, I mean, if you compare them to the Pharisees, yes. fairly simple, common people. But more trustworthy because they're but much spiritually rich. rich. Yeah. Because, I mean, they accepted Jesus. Yeah. Um, and the uh, Pharisees were sort of spiritually in debt uh, and, and lost. Well, they're more politicians than, yeah. uh, than yeah. really religious leaders. Yeah. So the, the Gospel of John, by the way, which happens to be a gospel I spent time with. Okay. Uh, and I was uh, totally amazed by yeah. the well, language. Anybody would be. The language, uh, Jesus' um, conduct, and yeah. the way he faces different groups. Mm -hmm. I, I was just. I, I really, really understood why there's so much admiration yeah. for, 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 for Jesus. Yeah. Um, and that so there's one passage where Jesus preaches to the common folk as common they are yeah. they still recognize that he's the Messiah yeah. they call him the Messiah yes. Jesus then continues his journey through through John you seem like you you get a taste of the social milieu that Jesus was in get you get a taste of like Nazareth and Jerusalem and what was really happening so then Jesus uh, goes on a Sabbath, he goes to meet the blind man and the family and the, the parents and cures them. And then the blind man sees. And then the news are spreading now. Look, this group already said it is the Messiah. Over here, he's curing blind people. Now the alarm bells are ringing. Oh yes, the birds are getting really upset. Yeah, uh, they're right. Joining hands of the enemies. So they in, do interrogation, if you like. They invite or go to the parents' house to confirm. Has this happened? Yes. Has it happened? Yes. They see the reaction of the Pharisees, and John reports that the parents they don't want to get involved any deeper because they, they were yeah. going to get kicked out of the synagogue. Yeah. Go ask our son. Yeah, ask him. Ask him. He's the one who's going to see. And and I love his response. Uh, so the Pharisees ask him. He confirms it. To a point where he gets frustrated, he says, "Why don't you follow him? Why are you asking me all these questions?" No, it's amazing that bit. I right? love it. And he says, "He's a prophet." Yes. And then the encounters, the big, big encounters, the finale, right? The Pharisee encountering Jesus and having this back and forth with him, and and testing him, and he shows superiority in, in terms of the uh, the prostitute. And then he knows that you're not interested in justice. You're interested in it's a, a trap. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. Trap. And I'm not going to fall into the trap. But Jesus still does what he has to do as a messenger and tells the woman, do not sin again. I mean, I believe that woman never went back after that. No, no, I wouldn't be surprised. Because right? her life was saved. Yeah. yeah, not yeah. by the Pharisees, but the Lord himself. Yeah. You know, so she had a debt to the Lord. So all these things are happening now, and then you find that amongst the Pharisees, there is uh, the session happened now. Yeah. Doubts is, no doubt, 
faith well, yeah. is creeping in. Some are actually begin to believe. Yeah, yeah. While the majority don't still. Yeah. Because they realize, hang on, this can't be happening. And yeah. this God is really here. God's work. Like okay. Nicodemus, for example. Is it, here's one of the senators right there. And uh, Josephus himself, the two. Okay. Okay. okay, they were secret. But the, the, act, the book of Acts says there were others later on who came out. They realized that is the truth. So where are Roman senators? Yeah. And they were they were believers whilst Jesus was around. Oh no 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 no! I'm, I'm talking about the, the Israeli Senate. Okay. Yeah, of course. The, 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 the one we in the Senate, we're talking about the Sanhedrin, okay. which is the law, the highest law court in Israel, like well the Supreme Court here. Okay. So that the equivalent. Okay. Uh, no, the pilot was the governor, so he's the law. The he represented Pax Romana. The, okay. The Peace of Rome. Yeah. Roman Pax Romana. Yeah. So the Roman that they go on legal code, while sure. the Jews were still allowed to have their own legal Old codes. codes yeah. But the legal code of the Jewish people did not was not allowed to execute anyone. Sure. That was given over to the Romans. Legislative. They were colonized. And that yeah. was it. Yeah. But they agitated for it because they said, we can't kill him. But it's a pilot that creates. They said, okay, I'll do it. Just, Hello there. Just mentioning that, yeah. I really, really like the way you are sort of encompassing the entire material culture of, and the political. I feel like sometimes that is missing in a conversation yeah. and people tend to do more theology than historiography. Yes. And I feel like when you do historiography, especially with Christianity, the whole story of Jesus becomes much more richer. Of course it does. Um, <laughs> it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's much deeper than we can even converse on our Christmas. Yes, a, yes, a, yes, a, yes. A freezing day on a Sunday. Yeah. But uh, I, I see what you're getting at. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Because to me, history should should confirm or elaborate yeah. things that we may have glossed over by accident or something by purpose. Sure. But sure. nonetheless, you say, oh, I didn't realize that area there. Yeah. Uh, or for example, the language itself that is yeah. spoken. Yeah. Uh, Translation might have missed it slightly. You know, yeah. Translation. So what does it actually mean? So oh, yeah, yeah. open the avenues of vistas of yeah. information about the Christ there. Yeah. The yeah. 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 Um, you know, and I, I've said this before to people. Yeah. Like when people want to compare historical figures, it's very difficult because the circumstances and like the political. Um, circumstances of over time oh, yeah, do different. not always match no they don't so for example when people compare the uh, muhammad the prophet muhammad and jesus it's kind of in a way a false comparison because jesus lives in a time where jerusalem is colonized so there's no real autonomy uh, jesus attracts First, and the majority of prophets do, attracts uh, the weak and the common and the disadvantaged. Uh, he doesn't build a commune or a city where he is, because his mission is he's going to come back to rule. Which is also part of his mission. Yeah, that's the second phase. Yeah. You might call it. First yeah. phase is death and resurrection. Yeah. Setting up conditions of uh, entry to the kingdom yeah. of God. Or heaven. Yeah. Uh, this is this is one of the reasons why I say when people do that comparison, it's more a fanatic uh, argument that it's you know steep with fanaticism uh, of the equivalence of like whether you support Newcastle or or Manchester <laughs> rather than actually thinking about this in a in the most sane possible way. Yeah. Um, I believe both were incredibly. And you don't have to believe in both. But they're, they're um, incredibly, extremely powerful individuals who are able to build a resistance to the spirit of history that goes like this, and I, and everything underneath happens. And they were able to poke that spirit and change the cause of it. Well, as Phil Bobo said, uh, Christ divides history into BC and AD. Before Christ and exactly. the Roman Domini. So he's a central figure yeah. in world history. Yeah. No matter which area you're coming from. Yeah. So in order to understand world history, you have to understand who is this person called Jesus Christ, yeah. what did he do, what did he, what actions have followed, etc. etc. And the consequence is still here today, whether it's in music, literature, yeah. sculpting, yeah. paintings, everything yeah. that we have, especially in the Western world, yeah. uh, has had an influence about Christ and vision, yeah. of compassion, of mercy. Etc. Uh, so people have reflected that yeah. in diverse ways. Yeah. I've got business companies that have been started from Christian foundations, yeah. Christian chemists, 
the Red Cross International, all these things have come out of that yeah. uh, foundation of Christ. You know, it, it's, it's undeniable at this point uh, the impact that uh, Jesus Christ as a historical figure, as a prophet, and to some people divine in flesh, so what, uh, what do you think in my ask about who do you think Jesus is, really is? I believe what the, the, the blind man believed. Yeah. That he was a prophet. But he's more than a prophet. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> I believe when he proclaimed that he's a prophet, that's probably what I would have said about Jesus as well. Well, the, the blind man actually said, uh, is he the Messiah? Who is he? I also Christ? believe that. Yeah. I also believe that. I also believe. seen him and he's talking with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, so, I also believe that. So, also believe so, that. Yeah, that's the best way to look at uh, it. And, and this is just mere um, language. Yeah. I believe that Jesus also was the Logos. Yeah, the word. I believe Abraham was the Logos, and I also believe Moses was the Logos. Oh, look out. Nice oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm very, I'm, I'm really saying that in the language, in terms of the linguistic. Uh, um, what the term actually means if you go back to Heraclitus yeah. who sort of I don't know if he devised or came up with the idea but the idea of Logos and I've read a bit about it so being the meeting point at the horizon between humanity and divinity if you at the crossroads there that's, 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 that's Jesus um, and his uh function to connect because that's what he does when he goes to the pharisees he they are thinking they are te teaching him a lesson but in reality he's teaching them a lesson that they have totally forgotten the spirit of the law of course they have that's what he just did when he's 12 years old yeah and, he, and they were shocked yes they didn't realize that he is the one who gave the law to moses <laughs> but you see that's the, a, a question state. comes to mind there is this a period to say um the period where jesus was younger like the dark period they call it or something like that i don't know yeah. it's a period where there's not much known about his life if, if you like well from age 12 until about age 30 18 years the bible is in the silent and, uh, okay it doesn't give you information so, so people make conjectures which yeah is dangerous because then uh, where they get that information from sure you know? because i'm thinking so jesus performed miracles before and he was faced by the, the, the public okay. so yeah. does he does he outlive a generation that forgets about these miracles or does he disappear and everyone forgets about it because people forget well, which which miracles are you talking about what you thinking about? um when he was 12 and well when he was 12 he didn't do any miracles did he not speak in the cradle no okay that's the that's the that's the that, islamic that counts from what you call the gnostic books okay that's the which yeah. is like i think it's a gospel so-called of thomas in egypt oh, which comes so. in the second or third century oh they mention things like that yeah those are fictitious stories they're okay. all made up about historical understanding of what's going on yeah uh, and they wouldn't make sense even from a theological point of view because everything christ did was for a reason for example the first miracle that's ascribed to him is actually called a sign I mean, you mentioned that you like John's Gospel. Yeah. There are actually eight particular signs in John's Gospel. Sure. And they are signs like a road map. So the first one is a Cana wedding miracle. Where God comes to earth and he enjoys fellowship with humans because yeah. there they're having a wedding. Sure. Of all things that he wants to bless. So they've already had inferior quality liquor. Not liquor, just wine. So, well, there are two yeah. types of wines in the Bible. Okay. That's what I'm aware of. One is called uh, 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 Tirosh, the other one is Yaya. So Tirosh is just like grape juice. Okay. But you can have different qualities of grape juice, which I, which I, I can go to wait for it. Yeah. Go to the different types. Yeah. So Christ actually changed the H2O water into a very superior liquid called new wine, which is non-alcoholic grape juice. Okay. So the master of ceremony is shocked. Where did this come from? Yeah. He says, yeah. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. And when you count the gallons involved, it's 120 gallons. Jay Smith has gone off the rocket. Oh, hi. He says, listen to this. He says, can I come back to you later? Mohammed 
is Jesus. That's wrong. Okay, okay. I'll come back yeah. to you. Yeah. Now, I, uh, sure. now, so the first miracle is a signature that, that these are signs. Okay. So there are seven others, including yeah. the one you mentioned about the yeah. blind man. Sure, sure. Right? Sure. And all of them are talking about Christ and Israel whether they accept the Messiah. So yeah. the message is also in the miracles themselves. Yeah. So the first one is about provision, okay. no problem. Yeah. The other one is about eyesight. Yeah. Do you actually see? Yeah. Not just for the man who's been healed, but the nation itself. The, yeah, just, and the other one is about feeding. So God says, I can feed anybody I want. So 5,000 of you out of a, a little boy's lunch. No problem, food, no problem. Distance, no problem. I heal somebody 10 miles away. So that the young man is healed. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. so all these are indicators yeah. of, of God at work in that way. So there's a reason why. So there's no reason to say, or anyone to say Christ had a bird when he was a kid and out of stone. I said, What's the point of all that? <laughs> there is a, there is if if you're saying there are texts in the Gnostic Gospels, which is very interesting, I didn't know. Yeah, they are Gnostics. So the Quran speaks of uh, same material. The, the immaculate birth. The yeah. immaculate birth. Do you believe in that? Uh, in a way, the Quran talks about it. No, it talks about Christ being born under a palm tree of Mary. No, no. Just the fact that, biologically speaking. Oh, it's a virgin birth. Yeah, yeah you yeah, believe in that? Fine. That's, the, yeah. that's okay. That's just that phrase alone. Yes. Yeah. But not in the incidental elements that the Quran puts them. Sure. Sure. I don't think that's historical because sure. it doesn't make sense either. Sure. So Mary gives birth but who has never been touched yeah she goes back to the community and she's accused no nah, it doesn't work like that at all but mary <laughs> gives birth to christ in a manger of animals because they're, they're, remember it's a royal family they have to go back to bethlehem the king david's town their lineage is from david she was was mary a noble prominent woman well, she, she might be called, what you might call a princess. Okay. Both of them, Joseph is actually a prince in that sense. Because they came from a royal family okay. of King David. So they're descendants. So that's why they were told to go back to Bethlehem, the royal family household. But then why? Otherwise, the, Jesus would not be the Messiah. But then why do the Pharisees not know who he is? No, they do. But they say, when the wise men came, what, where did they go to? No, they go to Jerusalem and they ask King Herod. King Herod asked who? The Pharisees, the Sadducees. So they look up at the oh, they look up in the Tanakh, in the Old Testament. It says, "Oh, it must be born in a blah 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 Bethlehem." Okay, I'm saying. So they do know, but they don't want to believe. No, but I'm saying, chronologically speaking, mm. Jesus grows up, lives his life, yeah, till he reaches thirty. Okay. Hits thirty-three, goes to Jerusalem. Yeah. And he's an unknown person. Yeah. Why? Well, for those eighteen years, there's no data what's going on. All I can surmise is that as you're growing up, like everybody grows up after you're 12, you're a teenager, right? Uh, is in uh, his stepfather's business, because Joseph was taken in an architect, not just a carpenter, the word is techno, and it doesn't refer just to the carpentry. So he's a, a, a major character in building uh, houses or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, some suggestion from my Jewish friend has been that he might also have been responsible for preparing the temple, being a highly uh, classified artisan in that area, not just carpentry. Yeah. So Christ would have actually followed, as a Jewish tradition is always, to follow your father's uh, business yeah. so that you yeah. can take over if you want to, whatever. So if from 12 years old until you're 30, that's what you're doing. Or but, you could be doing other things as well that you were kept quite silent about. For example, there's a phenomenon whereby the Old Testament calls the Book of Chronicles technically, uh, and then 400 years later comes the Book of Matthew. In that 400 years, God never spoke about a prophet anywhere. Yeah. So God is silent. Yeah. So people think, what happened? God kept quiet. He didn't say anything. I do so not have anything any... between twelve and thirty. I, ha I have absolutely no <laughs> issues with that. Yeah. A possibly explanation is perhaps, does King Herod live on till Jesus becomes an adult? Uh, King Herod, uh, we or, don't know. Or does King he? King Herod is at the time of Christ when Christ is already one year, three months old, when the wise men came. And they came out here when later. does King Herod pass away? Uh, very, very after he's murdered the, the baby or kids who are two years and under. So it could be any time after two years after crisis. He, he passes passed. away. Yeah. So, so we married. could be, may possibly argue that that knowledge is forgotten with him. 
Are you one of Herod or? Of the virgin birth. No, on, the, I don't think anybody knew about the virgin birth apart from Joseph and Mary. That's the point. Oh, right. okay. So it's just, it's just, no, but you said the born, the, but you said the wise man. The wise man came to see Christ when he was already born. The and chronology then, is different from when they think he was born. The wise man came when he's in a stable. The wise man came when he's in the house. And did that? Did he know about the virgin birth? Who? The wise man. The wise man probably didn't know anything about that. Or, or they could have. The reason I say could have is because you see the wise men we surmise came from the east because they follow the star. Yeah. So if they were my guy, as they are classified, the yeah. my guy were part of the royal family's household of the Babylonians, yeah. the Iranians, the ancient Iranians, because uh, Daniel yeah. would have passed the knowledge, and that's why they remember Daniel being the chief Magi at that particular time centuries before. Sure. So they were still in the custodian of the book yeah. of Daniel. Yeah. So they were reading that Messiah is coming 493 years to the town. So they looked and saw the star that followed it. So if they were righteous, as it's indicating, yeah. I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if they also knew yeah. about Isaiah saying that the virgin birth of the Messiah as well. So to answer your question is, yeah. it is most likely they knew about it. Okay. okay. But it wasn't a public thing. No. Uh, otherwise, the whole world of Israel will be talking about it. It will be front page news, so called, you know. Uh, the reason it's not mentioned as such is it's up to people to make up their mind and say, why didn't anybody else know about this amazing event apart from the shepherds? Okay, even when the shepherds came, right? They didn't know it was a virgin birth. They just realized a child is born. But then, <laughs> so basically, it's the audience, the onlookers, i.e., us. Yeah. Who know about it? Yeah, because we're looking from we're looking yeah. back on that. But the people uh, around that time didn't. Some know about of them it. were probably ignorant as well. Not just because uh, it's, it's not a it's not a slur. No. Okay. They, they just they didn't know. That's we interesting. know that's interesting. because we can read and say, ah, that's what happened. Okay. They were they were in it, but they, some of them couldn't understand what's going on around them. They were just participants. I mean, the shepherds, for example, right? Uh, the shepherds arrive, yeah. they go to the manger, yeah. they see the baby, yeah. and then afterwards, the shepherds are gone. Okay. Yeah, all right, brother. So the shepherds have disappeared. But <laughs> granting, so granting... Some that, of them were probably talking to other shepherds. Sure. Hey, guys, we just been over there. Sure, sure. <laughs> By granted that we don't actually know too much about Jesus' earlier life. Yeah. It may have been a the, the talk of the town. We don't. We just simply just don't know. Well, if it was the talk of the town, surely somebody could have recorded it because we have the Talmud, for example. It depends, uh, though. Uh, it, dep it, depends, it, it depends. It depends. It relevant. It depends what the news are. Yeah, exactly. If it's it's been said that, well, there's this woman Mary. She's yeah. noble and claiming all, but she had a baby. She's never been touched. That's not a very favorable thing and if you're saying she was a princess you would have have enough power know, but to suppress did, yeah, uh, but more, the recording uh, of it but a lot of people didn't know she was a princess now ah. that you know that about joseph we only know that because the genealogical records that were kept in jerusalem for the whole of the whole 12 tribes of israel so they could look them up until 1870 when they were destroyed I, 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 I have these questions i'm thinking okay cool, look that's a genealogical yeah. uh, 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 lineage of someone's house, yeah. uh, household, and where they come from. Yeah. But then the Pharisees who should know this don't know this. Yeah, but remember, the Pharisees had their own uh, advancement uh, politically. Uh, yeah, ideas. but especially because they of weren't it. interested no, until it hit them and say, "Hang on, guys! No, but guess who's around?" But I'm saying, especially because it was political. This is a very political uh, feature, if you like, <laughs> knowing someone's household in their lineage. Yeah. It's a very political thing. But they are referring to Jesus as this unknown person. Yeah, because they're clueless. <laughs> the Pharisees have got their own agenda. Okay, we, I we, understand we, that. we tend to rubbish the Pharisees, but that's not really fair. A lot of Pharisees are quite righteous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what the Pharisees did as a whole, they went above the law. Yeah. They added to the word of God. So they made their traditions yeah. supersede God's word. Yeah. And that nullified the word of God. And that's what ticked off Jesus Christ when he came and rebuked constantly. He says, this is what you're doing. And he warned the apostles, don't follow what they're doing yeah. because they're in Moses' authority. That is true. 
But what they're doing, they're adding to God's word and nullifying it. Yeah. So the, if they were like, for example, Anna. Remember Anna, the lady was a prophetess in the temple? Right I know, then, I know, yeah. I know. She, she, like Simeon, were waiting for the constellation of Israel, the Messiah, to arrive. Okay. So when Jesus was born and Joseph and Mary come and present Jesus to be circumcised in the temple, why did Anna do say, oh, the Lord has arrived? Yeah. She had been a virgin woman, not a virgin, but she had been married, but she, her husband had died almost like 70 years, I think, about time scale, a long time. But she served God with prayers and fastings in the temple. So she saw the Lord as the Messiah. So the news about the Messiah was revealed to individuals that the Lord wanted to know because of the faithfulness. Now, a lot of Pharisees were not that faithful to God, so why would God be bothered fair, with them? That's a fair point, that's a fair point. It's the same thing about the resurrection. People say, why yeah. didn't Jesus appear to non-believers? They say, why should he? They wouldn't believe him anyway the first time. Yeah. He appeared to people that, he re that were receptive to him. Fair but point, only in one or two individuals, like Simon or so, or later on. Uh, but apart from that, no. So the virgin birth, it's a doctrinal, doctrinal pillar yeah. in, in Christianity, but yet uh, the contemporaries weren't really able to benefit of, of holding onto that pillar because it wasn't really unknown, according to you. Well, when Mary had Jesus, right, she wasn't going to go around, oh, by, God, by the way, guys, uh, I'm a virgin mother. <laughs> I don't think she ever said that to anyone. But the that's that's a sign. It's exactly. a sign from God, though. Yeah. It Is that not something that would be used to sway even more people? No. At least get people prepared to the watch the come. The only person that who probably knew was uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth, the father and mother yeah. of John the Baptist. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Apart from that, God made sure that. Uh, I think another reason is that uh, sheltering. It, it was protecting Jesus yeah. from un from intrusive uh, uh, people inquiring in the wrong way. Yeah. Like the paparazzi I like yeah. to do these days. Yeah, and, so, and uh, innuendos and yeah, accusations. Precisely. Can you imagine? Yeah. Oh, there's a woman in a virgin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, that's sure. Snickers, 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 that sort of nonsense stuff. Sure, right? sure. I, I do see that. I, I see that. I can see that narrative. Yeah. But then also the Quranic narrative I can also see. I, I, I don't see. I don't see. Because you said it doesn't make sense to me. In that way, it could also make sense. What do you mean? If I was being objective here, not uh, trying to be, uh, have a bias, um, that um, that Jesus is born, yeah. the virgin birth happens, and it becomes a sign for the immediate audience, and then they are questioned, and uh, they question Mary and how how dare you? You you come from a noble household. And then the baby responds and defends the mother. That's a very powerful imagery as well. Yeah, but Despite of whether you believe it or not, I, I'm just saying, objectively, it's a very powerful imagery. Yeah, it might be a powerful imagery, but it's got no historical veracity because why would a baby talk like that? Uh, when the, sorry, I think your phone was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, <laughs> remember, it was not just the baby. <laughs> Because it was a virgin it, baby. It doesn't, no, but it doesn't make any sense because Why? the things Jesus did growing up as an ordinary human being, right, was like you and I growing up. We don't well, talk that's, like that, babies. That's, I say, hey guys, I'm but a that's what, that's what we Again, that's what we're assuming. Since there aren't as many information about how Jesus actually grew up. And he might have been one of those kids he fell off the tree and then he stopped floating and he, he's not realizing why, why I'm floating. That is super boy and super man. Uh, right? We, we don't, we simply just don't know. I'm just saying, I'm objectively, I'm just saying. It, it, it sounds quite convincing also. Yeah, but that's very good for DC yeah. Marvel. Yeah. yeah but I, listen, he was walking on water. Yeah, but well that's when he's grown up. And there's a reason for it. You see, there's always a reason sure, for the sure. things Christ did. Sure. Uh, Christ didn't do anything to show off. Yeah. That way. But right. but I'm sure that he realized very early on that he was slightly different from his peers. Well, but, yeah, of course he was. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> when he was 12, he knew more knowledge. 
than, than the doctors of the law. Yeah. So obviously, they yeah, were yeah, told, yeah. who taught this boy? <laughs> huh? Yeah. He says, well, my father never did yes, that. Yes, 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 yes. So, and he grows up, the Bible says he grew up in wisdom and stature of both God and man. Amazing, amazing. So he did both at the same time. Yeah. As a normal kid, yes, so that we would identify, so yeah, God can experience that, we can do the same thing. Simple as that, really. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, hey, it's been nice talking to you. Yeah, I really appreciate you. that. No worries. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah, you too. Ah, oh, it's freezing. Yeah, it is, it is, it is <laughs> indeed.